Hey guys, I'm Hellhound. <clears throat> you know it's a great book, Pet Cemetery by Stephen King, one of the most well-known authors of all time, and you know, most consider him the master of horror, um, rightfully so. Uh, yeah, Pet Cemetery is a great book, <clears throat> really sad, also really scary. <clears throat> Deals with some really serious themes like guilt, um, grief, uh, your loss. Um, and, you know, death, which is something we all must inevitably face someday. Um, you know, and Stephen King touches upon all those subjects and fleshes them out really well. Uh, some, you know, very well-written characters and storylines. Uh, it's easily some of his scariest work. Um, you know, very heartfelt, very emotional. Um, you know, it really asks a lot of questions. Uh, really, uh, I think it really appeals to the reader. Um, but anyway, they made a movie adaption. That Cemetery, which I have already reviewed. Um, and I also talked about the sequel, Pet Cemetery 2. And that's what I'm here to do today. I'm going to review Pet Cemetery 2, because I already reviewed part 1. Um, so yeah, Pet Cemetery. We all know what it's about, right? A pet cemetery that's right next to an ancient Indian burial ground, the Micmac Indian Cemetery, which, uh, if you bury something there, it'll come back to life. Um, and become evil. Yeah, I buried a goldfish there once. Yeah, came back and tried to kill me. No, uh, it wasn't very successful though. But, um, and I also heard that, um, if you bury a uh, Master of Puppets by Metallica in that burial ground, it'll come back as Saint Anger. Yeah, true story. So, uh, anyway, Pet Cemetery 2. What's it about? Well, the kid from, uh, Terminator 2, uh, who played John Connor, that's what he's best known for, Edward Furlong. Um, he was also in American History X, Detroit Rock City, um, more recently The Crow, Wicked Prayer, uh, a few others. Um, yeah, his mom, played by Darlan Flugel, dies in a horrific accident. She's an actress. She dies on set. She gets electrocuted to death. It's all an accident. Um, and so, uh, him and his dad, uh... Chase, Chase Matthews, played by Anthony Gilbert, you know, for Revenge of the Nerds. Um, they move back to that town of Ludlow, Maine, where his mom was from, and they get a house that's relatively close to the old Creed house, you know, the Creed family from the original Pet Cemetery, Lewis Creed, Rachel Creed, Ellie Creed, and poor little young Gage, who was, you know, the one who got struck by a Mack truck and came back to life as a evil child in the first movie. Um... But, you know, the scariest part of the first movie, of course, is Rachel's sister, Zelda, seen in flashbacks and hallucinations. But anyway, yeah, Jeff Matthews is our main character, played by Edward Furlong. His mom dies, him and his dad move to Newtown. He befriends uh, the local fat kid, um, Drew Gilbert, I forget the actor's name. Um, something McGuire, I don't know. Um, and, of course, there's uh, Drew's stepdad, Gus Gilbert. And, uh, played by Clancy Brown, who's one of my favorite actors, you know, from Highlander, uh, Shawshank Redemption, The Bride. He's also the voice of Lex Luthor in Superman. Um, yeah, he's just freaking awesome. He was the villain in the show Cardi Ball, too. He plays and plays a great villain, and he's the best part about this movie, by the way. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and there's also Drew's mother, Amanda, who's pretty much a wimp. She just lets her husband abuses her son, you know, it's his stepson all the time, and doesn't do a damn thing about it, uh, you know, and he's also the sheriff, so, yeah, Drew's in a tough situation, and then, uh, but he does have a dog, Zowie, who seems to be pretty protective of him, he's a pretty faithful companion, and, um, <clears throat> is also pretty much what sets in motion the events of the movie, um, and there's also the resident bully character, uh, Clyde, played by Jared Rushton, um, you know, every Stephen King novel pretty much has a, had to have a bully. Well, the original Pet Cemetery book and movie didn't have one, so I guess they felt the need to put one in part two. And uh, this asshole Clyde just bull bullies Jeff for no reason other than the fact that his mom was a celebrity and she died. It's like, really? Hasn't he been through enough? But yeah, Clyde's just a total dick. Um, but uh, he gets what's coming to him, which I think is, you know, going to be pretty obvious throughout the movie. So anyway, <clears throat> those are our characters. Uh, I don't think I left anybody out. Oh, yeah, there's the throwaway housewife who's, you know, 
wasn't even really a love interest to Anthony Edwards' character Chase. Uh, I don't know why she was in there. She's pretty pointless. It's got kind of threw her in there. I don't know why. But uh, anyway, yeah, she's in it too. And I think that's pretty much everybody. Um, so yeah, basically, you know, Gus is an abusive stepdad. He's he's really mean to Drew. He's very strict. He's got some a crazy uh, <clears throat> set of rules. Um, it was every time you know Drew does something bad, he refers to it as breaking the law. Um, yeah, he puts uh, Drew's dog Zally outside, and when Zally messes with rabbits, Gus shoots Zally and kills the poor dog. Uh, this makes Drew really emotional, and so he and Jeff kind of bond um, you know, through their mutual respective losses. Jeff lost his mom, Drew lost his pet. Um, you know, they all throughout they've been being told the legend of the Micmac Indian burial ground, which brings back the dead. Um, they've been told about the Creed family and, um, you know, Judd Crandall, who was played by Fred Gwynn in the first movie. Um, you know, they're told about all that stuff. Um, it's not really a sequel, um, but it does mention the events of the first movie a lot. And, you know, there's no, other than that, uh, the same setting, um, there's no real connection. It is the same Pet Cemetery, of course, uh, though filmed in a different location. I think this one was filmed in Georgia, so it actually looks a lot different. And for some reason, it doesn't take them forever to hike to the burial ground like they did in the first movie. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, um, it's that kind of sequel where it's very loosely, um, connected. None of the same characters return. It doesn't follow the events of the first movie. It doesn't have the same characters. It doesn't show what happens after the first movie, unfortunately. It'd be kind of interesting to see what happens after, you know, the undead Rachel walks back in, picks up a knife, says, darling, and then obviously stabs Lewis, but whatever happened to her? Um, this movie mentions that she did die for a second time. But anyway, yeah, after Gus shoots Zowie, they decide... What the hell? Let's bury him in the Indian burial ground. Let's bury him in the Micmac Cemetery, um, which is known for bringing the dead back to life. They do that. Zowie comes back as like an evil, vicious, demonic dog with glowing eyes, and he still has the wound from where he's shot. Um, and nobody seems to think it's suspicious that he's like covered in dirt and has the glowing eyes. But yeah, whatever. Uh, I guess the suspension of, of disbelief is necessary. Um, you know, it's kind of like Church from the first movie, the evil undead cat with the glowing eyes. Uh, similar... Um, so yeah, they go out for Halloween, uh, they hang out with some, some friends, uh, including the bully Clyde for some reason, who tells the story of the first movie, the events, um, he mentions that Ellie killed her grandparents, she was the only survivor of the events of Pet Cemetery, by the way, she killed her grandparents, and went to a mental asylum, I don't know if that's true or not, but it never really, um, confirms that to be an accurate, um, telling of the events, but, so who knows, um, so, um, Gus comes, he's pissed off at Drew, he starts punching him, so now we know that he's physically abusive as well, um, he's just an all-around asshole, but when it really gets good is when Zowie comes, protecting Drew, seemingly, and bites Gus's friggin' jugular vein out, he just bites him on the throat, kills him instantly, um, you know, after Gus begged Drew to, uh, call him off, so yeah, the dog got his revenge, isn't that awesome? And now here's where the movie gets good. Um, and as I said, uh, you know, the first movie was very sad, uh, really scary as well. A uh, very emotional, very heartfelt movie, uh, very beautifully told. Um, you know, some genuinely really terrifying moments and some really, really uh, melancholy moments that really, you know, get you thinking about uh, life and stuff. This movie takes it in a totally different direction with over-the-top characters, excessive gore, um, just, you know, it's, it, but I will say, the first movie's way better, of course, um, it's a more sophisticated, but this one movie is way more entertaining, it's way more fun, if I want to have some laughs and have a blast, I'll watch this movie, it, it's, it's, it's crap, but it's good crap, yes, that does exist, um, and yeah, as I said, when the movie gets good is when they bury Gus in the cemetery, and he comes back, and he's just friggin' hilarious, um, he has <laughs> an evil undead, uh, sheriff, um, the, pet cem the cemetery made him have bad uh, manners at the dinner table and other stuff. That's just, I just find a riot. Um, but yeah, he's actually kind of nice to Drew now, weirdly enough. Um, so yeah, and then they, they determine that it depends on what people are like before they're dead. Um, so yeah, pretty soon Gus starts getting a little more insane, a little more evil. His rotting brain, I think, uh, starts to deteriorate some and he starts doing vicious things. Um, and I guess I won't give it away, that's kind of what, you know, that's kind of what the rest of the happens is, you know, I guess it's supposed to be kind of a, full of surprises and twists and turns, but 
it's probably pretty obvious, but we do see a lot more um, undead people this time. A lot more people are buried and come back. We get to see a lot more of them in action and uh, kind of a lot more of what would happen. Um, and it's a little, the zombie, zombies, I guess, I use that term loosely. Um, the ones seen here are a lot different from the ones of the first movie, like, you know, Timmy Baderman, Gage, and Rachel, um, and even the animals, uh, you know, they behave a little differently, and I think it was kind of an interesting, uh, interesting to see, you know, what could happen. This, this movie explores a few more possibilities about the burial ground, um, which is kind of interesting and kind of cool, but as I said, it's pretty much just an over-the-top, um, all-out, gory, uh, fun fest, like an MTV movie, like, uh, Mary Lambert, who directed the first movie, also returned to direct this one, and she was previously a music video director, um, you know, she made music videos, I think she did some for Madonna, and it really shows here, uh, she's, there's an awesome soundtrack, lots of really cool 90s, uh, rock and roll, uh, some, some grunge tunes, uh, yeah, a lot of grunge, alternative rock, um, great soundtrack, great score, um, yeah, really awesome songs here, um, and some really weird dream sequences of bluish lighting and and stuff. You can really tell she directed music videos in the past. Uh, but yeah, as I said, this one takes a completely different direction from the first movie. It's more of a the first movie is more of a horror film. This one kind of borders on horror comedy, and it's not really as sad as the first movie. There's not really really sad emotions that really tug at your heartstrings like in the first movie. The first movie just oh my god. I mean, losing a child is like the worst thing that can happen to somebody. And anybody who has experienced that, I can't even begin to imagine the pain you're going through. And the first movie really touches upon that. Um, this movie, I mean, losing a parent, um, you know, that's really bad too, of course, but it's kind of the natural circle. It's going to happen to everybody eventually. Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, but you know, losing a child is obviously much worse. And, um, this movie really shows uh, what someone can go through on that. Um, yeah, and this movie's, you know, it's kind of a contrast. Um, it's losing a parent, um, losing a pet too, like in the first movie. Um, and then really, a lot of really crazy, uh, undead people who came back after being buried. Uh, yeah, really crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, this movie's highly entertaining. Uh, I really do like it. I know, I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10. It's really not a good movie, but hell, I mean, it does exactly what, you know, a motion picture is supposed to do. It entertains. It's very amusing. Um, you know, it's very fun to watch. I'd love to get a bunch of friends together and eat a pizza, you know, or a pizza, um, and watch this and have a good old time. The first movie is more of a movie to watch probably alone or, um, maybe with a good friend. Um, I still have a hard time sitting through this one. Um, you know, all about the, you know, poor little two-year-old Gage thing, uh, but also Zelda. Yeah, a lot of really creepy moments. Um, I can handle pretty much anything, but yeah, as I said, losing a child is just something that you know, just almost unspeakable um, as to how sorrowful that would be. But yeah, um, I'd say check out Pet Cemetery too. I'd give it a watch. Um, a lot of people hate it. A lot of people regard it as one of the worst sequels ever made, but really, I don't see why it's so bad. I mean, it doesn't really break any of the rules uh, set by the first film or the book. Um, I mean, the book does admit a lot of the things from the novel, like the Wendigo um, and the whole reason why the ground went sour, also Judd's wife and stuff. Um, and this movie just kind of, you know, ignores those those theme themes as well. Um, it does, but does, you know, just kind of follows the movie. Um, and yeah, as I said, it, it's not a conti direct continuation of the first movie. It's all new. It's all new cast, all new characters, an all new storyline. But I, for one, kind of appreciate that. Um, they should make a Pet Cemetery three. You know, um, how about Traveling Circus comes to Ludlow and like one of the acrobats falls and dies. They bury him in the set Pet Cemetery. And then chaos ensues, at least all kinds of other crazy scenarios. We see some evil undead clowns and all kinds of other crazy stuff. <laughs> but no, I'm just kidding. Uh, they are going to remake uh, Pet Cemetery, though. They're going to do another book adaption. Supposedly going to be even more gruesome than this one. Um, and supposedly they're actually going to show... Uh, now, in the novel, Gage Creed uh, didn't look all you know perfect like um, he did in the movie. The truck that mowed him down, really, he came back really mangled and... Uh, really uh, very gory, and the new movie is supposed to adapt that and also make Gage a foul little potty mouth child who s spurts forth over the top vulgarity, like in the book. 
Um, so it's going to be closer. It might even have the, you know, contain all the Wendigo subplots and everything, too. And maybe contain Judd's wife. So, um, yeah, I sh um, it'll probably be a closer adaption, um, but it's going to be really hard to watch, uh, I bet. Um, and uh, that's Pascal, the ghost, on the cover, by the way, the good ghost. He tries to help Lewis and Rachel, but it warns them about the cemetery. Um, not sure why he's on the cover, but uh, I guess he was just the most gruesome looking character. But anyway, yeah, uh, I highly recommend you read the book. It's one of Stephen King's best. Um, check out the movie adaption, and definitely check out the sequel for a, for a really good time. As I said, it's by no means a great movie, but it's just, you know, so entertaining and just so fun to watch. Especially because of Clancy Brown as Gus. He just steals the show. He makes this movie. He's friggin' awesome. And honestly, he was more interesting to me than, um, you know, Jeff's whole determination with, you know, wanting to bring his dead mom back and stuff, um, and his kind of slow descent into madness. He becomes kind of an evil character, too, uh, towards the end. You'll see what I mean to watch it. Um, and, uh, but yeah, it's all about Gus, man. It's all about Clancy friggin' Brown. Uh, he's the reason I enjoy Pet Cemetery too so much. All right, guys, we'll give it a watch. I give it a 7 out of 10. Um... Thank you for watching another of my videos. I'm Hellhound, and uh, until next time.